When Kong met Godzilla, the world held its breath. Two icons of cinema throwing down for the ultimate crossover event. Now, decades on, that movie looks really dumb and nobody cares anymore. Anyway, here's a comparison between two discontinued graphics cards in a time where nobody can buy them. Let them fly! Mesdames et Messieurs, bienvenue and welcome to the second GPU Duel Deathmatch to the Death. Between two cards you probably can't get nostalgic about yet. In this corner, representing Nvidia, it's the green haired stepchild itself, the GTX 780. Underappreciated in its time, this card has stepped out from the TI's shadow with something to prove today. Its opponent, in the other corner, from the mean streets of wherever AMD are from, I guess Wyoming or something, it's the R9 380. This mid-range master might have lost its driver support lately, but don't be fooled. With an advantage in both VRAM and API support, the 380 might have some fine wine tricks up its sleeve. Who will win? What will be left of them? Does Wyoming even have streets? It's a state, right? Both graphics cards skirt dangerously close to the CPU limit when running Fortnite at competitive settings, with an average frame rate of 154 tipping things in the 780's favour over the imperceptibly slower 142 FPS 380. Pushing quality to high extends that advantage massively, bringing the win for Nvidia by a 20% margin. AMD took that punch hard, but came back swinging with a savage counterpunch. Call of Duty Warzone not only costs the 780 a win by over 10%, but also looks seriously fucked up on the Nvidia card. In fairness, the shadow glitch on the Kepler cards has apparently been fixed recently, but the numbers don't lie, and the 380 takes this round. Don't count out Kepler just yet. Although Horizon Zero Dawn exhibits yet another graphical glitch, this time looking like the result of a bad overclock, in pure FPS, the 780 dominates here. The 380 lost by over 25%. This fight can go either way, folks. Cyberpunk 2077 goes to AMD by a slim margin, about 10% in favour of the R9 380. This is one occasion where the VRAM advantage has come into its own. Forza Horizon 4 can't quite hit 60 FPS average on the 780, missing out by just 3 frames. The 380, however, absolutely annihilates the 780, winning by over 10 FPS and maintaining a confident 60 plus at all times. I can't keep up with this, folks. It's almost as if I deliberately ordered them this way to heighten the tension. Watch Dogs Legion goes to NVIDIA, with the GTX 780 beating the R9 380 by almost 20%, and wait a second, the 780 was caught testing positive for low settings instead of the more demanding medium preset on the 380. That's illegal! This result will be scratched from the record. Before we come to the results, folks, I'd like to take a moment to remember those that couldn't be with us today either because of incompatibility or because I'm bad at benchmarking sometimes. May they find the peace in death I could not give them in life. Rip, brothers. Rip. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm about fed the f*** up of doing that voice. So, with the numbers tallied for five titles, the GTX 780 scores an average FPS of 52.8. The R9 380 wins by half a frame, scoring 53.2. It really could scarcely have been any closer. Of course, even if you ignore the occasions where I f***ed up by testing a high on one card and low on another, yes, that happened more than once in this duel, and it's why there's only five games in the comparison. Even ignoring those, there are still games like Resident Evil Village that can only be run on the 780 by installing ancient drivers, and AC Valhalla, which needs full DX12 compatibility to even boot. 
Along with the now familiar batch of graphical glitches suffered by this godforsaken architecture, the GTX 780 really does demand a lot of patience and forgiveness from its users. On the other hand, the i9-380 has some community-based support in the form of custom drivers, which I'll be looking at in more detail in 2022, but which should in theory help breathe some life into otherwise problematic titles. Coming to the conclusion then, I think compatibility has to take the day here, meaning the winner of this GPU duel is the mighty R9-380. Of course, whichever card you own, be you Team Green or Team Red, we can all come together and agree. This was a really bad time for these brands to abandon driver support for these cards, and you won't change my mind on this. And no, don't you dare play the music. Don't you dare cut the mic. I will not be silenced.